Hi there. My name is Manfred J. Von Volte. I'm the director of the Comic Book Project Canada, and you are listening to True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book creators and supporters. It's November 17th, 2020. I'm John Swinimer. If you have a comment, criticism, or question, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Manfred Von Volte about Whitcalf 2020. The podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. And don't forget to check out the new YouTube channel. Hosted by the Whitby Library in Whitby, Ontario, the annual Comic Arts Festival celebrates comic book creators and makers in a variety of fun and entertaining activities, including exhibits, panels, readings, artist alley, contests, and more. Manfred is the published author of numerous articles, as well as two children's works, a history book, an educational guide on the use of comic books, and experiential learning for parents and teachers. Manfred has been teaching for over 20 years and recently joined the Durham Catholic District School Board in Ontario 2017. He established a comic book club at St. Leo Catholic School in Brooklyn. Manfred often volunteers his time to work with reluctant writers and readers for schools in Toronto. He is a director of the Comic Book Project Canada and was featured on the Space Channel and the Global Television Network. So without further ado, here's my chat with Manfred von Volte about Whitcalf 2020. Manfred von Volte, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure to do that, and uh, I'm always, uh, always uh, eager to talk about comic books, learning, and uh, some of the efforts that uh, we're doing in the Comic Book Project Canada. Sure. Well, before we get started, maybe you could just give a little bit of background about yourself as an educator and, and your role in comic books. Sure. Comic books really saved me academically. My sisters were always very good in school with all the academic courses. And for me, reading was very, very challenging. Um, my hobbies when I was a kid consisted of going to the convenience store with my buddies and buying as much sugar as possible. <laughs> right. um, one day when I was going to the local store in a, in a strip plaza near us in Scarborough, there was a store that opened up called Books. And I walked by and it was all romance novels, so obviously I, w I wasn't going in. And one day I had passed it and there was a small sign in the corner that said comic books sold here. Ah. And I thought, huh. Maybe I could use that twenty dollars my uh, my dad mailed me on better things than buying candy. So I went in, and they had a few long boxes there that I've come to know <laughs> as I as I collected, and I started buying comic books. Oh, okay. And I wasn't buying them sort of in the idea of uh, ooh, I wonder if they're going to be valuable or anything like that one day the stories kind of got me and it was so different than what we were reading in school at the time. So I was reading Batman, Brave and the Bold, the X-Men, uh, Superman, Justice League, uh, the Flash, Iron Man, and I, my, my collection kept getting wider and wider. And, you know, at the time there was no like binge watching or binge reading. I actually had to wait until the next installment uh, came out. So I really got into these stories. Mm-hmm. My teachers in school started to comment to my mom, how is it that Manfred's writing is getting so much better? <laughs> the ideas are getting better, the vocabulary is through the roof, the structure of the writing is improving vastly. Where is this coming from? Well, it came from comic books and the stories that I was, that I was reading through there. So fast forward a whole bunch of years, and um, I went to, uh, to York University, earned an uh, honors BA, uh, and then a master's. And then I taught for about 10 years, and the climate of education was changing. I was teaching in independent schools. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would go back to teacher's college, and I did that in uh, 2009, part-time. Uh, I was teaching full-time at the time, which was kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated in 2012, and then I was, I've was i been teaching language arts pretty much since I started my teaching career in, in 1999. 
And I was always working with sort of three kinds of students. The first kind, you could give them anything and they would love reading it. Anything. The second kind was sort of interested, but you kind of had to pique their interest. And the third had kind of resigned themselves that they were not good readers and writers. And that was it. And I always thought that was kind of a tragedy. So I thought, what source can I look back to where I can kind of recapture their hearts and minds and imaginations to get them back to reading and writing? And that was comic books and graphic novels. And so I started using that in language arts. And I found this organization in the United States that was started by a Dr. Bitts in Princeton, New Jersey. And he and I are still uh, uh, very much uh, in contact and uh, sort of uh, colluding and um, cooperating together on, on the comic book project. And he and I basically have come to an agreement that I have the Canadian rights to the comic book project, which is a, a literacy initiative that helps students of all abilities, but especially reluctant readers and writers. But, uh, you know, also to a degree, the advanced ones too, and uh, those on the middle ground. And we provide literacy presentations to educators, librarians, parents, children in school settings and also in library settings, community centers, what have you. So we've been, we've been at this, I think, yeah, almost about 10 years now okay. uh, do, mm-hmm. doing presentations we were featured on global tv and the space channel nationally uh, in, i think in 2013 and currently i am a full-time permanent teacher at the durham catholic district school board and i use comic books all the time in my classroom oh that's uh, great two year, well, yeah two years ago i was awarded the um distinguished catholic educator award which was uh, amazing. Yeah, congrats and on that. I'm still, I'm still doing a lot of work. I have a comic book club at the uh, at St. Leo's School where I teach full time. But this summer I also work with autistic students from across the Durham Catholic District School Board to develop and write comic books, which oh. is really, really rewarding mm-hmm. and I think super beneficial to them as well because there's many there's many benefits for students who have autism or learning disabilities where the design and development uh, and teaching students how to write these books and design them uh, is of great help to their development. So you're, you're recommending that comic books be included in the school curriculum as, as an ongoing thing? Absolutely. And, you know, many of your listeners may not be aware, but if you actually look at the Ontario curriculum for grades 1 to 8, uh, language arts, under reading, section 1.1, it's called Variety of Texts, T-E-X-T-S, Variety of Texts. And two of the texts that are recommended inside the curriculum are actually comic books and graphic novels. Oh, that's encouraging. That's great. Yeah. So I'll give you an example um, as to how that might work uh, also in the classroom. It is currently this year with my grade 8 class for reading H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we read this book. It is... Uh, just full of wonderful descriptive writing, but it's very text heavy. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So there are students who have of different abilities, and I've gotten them different graphic novels that go through the story itself. And I would venture to guess that their level of understanding compared to those who are reading the text heavy one on their own is uh, about equal. Okay, great. That's good. Yeah. So it certainly has its place, and there are some really advanced applications which I do enjoy. Uh, for instance, you know, we, we begin to study Shakespeare a little bit in grade eight, but definitely when we get into high school. Hmm. And a wonderful series called Kill Shakespeare out right. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to know something about Shakespeare in order to read this. I mean, you can read it on its own, but to really get the full effect, you have to know something about that because essentially they introduce all of Shakespeare's characters in one in one universe that exists together and against each other and for each other. Oh. And it's quite fascinating. So I, I think the, the higher levels of explicit and implicit reasoning, using comic books and graphic novels is, is certainly a, a major, major plus for critical thinking skills development, but also anywhere from basic to uh, 
um, advanced comprehension as, as well. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm talking to you and, and others about uh, WITCAF and other library-based events. So I'm wondering if you could sort of offer your opinion on what role libraries and library events like WITCAF and others play in fostering comic books and their creation. Right. I think any time that you take comic books and graphic novels and you take them out of the stereotypical comic shop or convenience store and you're predicating them with learning brings brings new insights, yeah? Okay. And when the Whitby Library does this, they're really, really doing the community and all the students of different ages, oh, I, I would say even of all ages, uh, a huge service. It is in many respects like a comic book convention, but there's a noticeable emphasis on the academic aspect of them and the variety of them. And I think that a lot of people who normally wouldn't go to the con, the comic book conventions, the cons as I call them, and they go to this would be pleasantly surprised, one, by the interaction you have with authors of these books and artists, which is sort of a, uh, an interesting third dimension to reading, right? You're, you're actually getting to meet with the creator and, and you can, you know, see with their worldview and, and how they've created these characters, which is a, a fascinating uh, exercise. Right. Uh, and also the, the variety of things that are available. There was a, I wish I could remember these guys, but there was a couple of gentlemen who wrote a comic book on the on the First World War. And there are some serious topics that comic books and graphic novels do cover that really illuminate learning. And, and that's, that's one of the great things that WITCAF does. It, it brings you into contact with the authors and the artists and, and then people like me who actually teach literacy through the medium of comic books. And it gives you a chance to talk to them, to get their materials, to sort of move the curtain, the curtain or the veil behind some of these books and, and actually talk to the author. And that's so valuable for this kind of literature. I always say to parents that a good book, whether it's a graphic novel, a comic book, or a, a textbook, um, uh, sorry, a book that's more grounded in text should really take their child by the hand and take them somewhere, you know, and encouraging them to do that reading, to hook them into reading again, and sometimes for the first time is, uh, again, invaluable. And for a library to do that, they're, they're more or less closing that gap. They're presenting this, this wonderful medium. They're presenting the, the creators, the authors, the educators behind them, and then my goodness, they're a library, so they have a, a stock of these things there that one can almost engage immediately. And that's closing the whole circle. And I think that's a, a wonderful approach. Sure. I, I think uh, you're referencing earlier those creators, uh, the group of seven, uh, Chris Sanigan and that's Jason Lapidus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Tremendous. They were, they were really super, those guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely a lot of uh, historical based in Canada, uh, speculative fiction, of course, but uh, would, would lead to further research, I guess, and uh, interest in that storyline. That's for sure. Yeah. That, that's the whole thing. Like, even when, even when you read uh, some of the, the, the classic superheroes, too. You, you get words and phrases about, about anything from finance to banking to engineering. And, and really, if you're into the story, the end result for you is, is sort of the read. But in a lot of ways, it's flipped uh, almost like a paradox to the beginning because you want to explore more of these things. And the historical fiction does a great job with that because then often I found, as a, as a struggling reader um, when I was younger, I wanted to know more. I wanted to see, well, what from the story is, is authentic, what was not, and I need to know more about this so I get a deeper understanding. So a lot of times comic books, you know, we used to use this phrase when I did my master's in history, is a, is a hermeneutic circle of meaning. Uh, you might begin at one spot, but then you go through the circle of meaning and it might bring you back to that comic book, but it brings you back to that comic book with a whole... Uh, schema of, of evidence and things that you've found to further inform your view. So it's, it's rather cyclical as, as well. Right. No, that's very encouraging. That's for sure. So what, what lies down the road for, for the Comic Book Project Canada? What's next? Well, 
you know, I think like everyone else, we are, are certainly affected by the uh, the COVID-19 situation. We've been developing some programs, which uh, <laughs> again, were for sort of a live a live audience mm-hmm. right um, we are we are moving very carefully to a, a virtual pivot this is sort of being experimented with at my home school at st leo where we have a, a virtual comic book club oh, okay and we talk about themes and different developments we've sort of we've done one we're developing a hero then we're developing a villain then we're working on some artistic concepts like one third rule when when animating and then getting feedback that way. Certainly our work with autistic students this summer at the Durham Catholic uh, District School Board proved that it, it certainly can be done. So that's a direction we're, 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 uh, we're taking a look at. Sounds encouraging. So where can people find out more about Comic Book Project Canada? Absolutely. Well, they can go to our website, which is, and I'll say this very slowly, www.comicbookprojectcanada.com. Right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, Manfred, those are all the questions I have, but I'm wondering if there's something I didn't ask you that you'd like to get across in this interview. Oh, I, although this is certainly changing with all the, the, the Marvel movies and, you know, DC's put out a, a couple of good ones, there is still this sort of uh, prejudice, if you will, against comic books as an inferior type of literature. Even even some creators have said it's it's not a genre. Uh, I think it is. I think that people need to further explore it and see that it just it doesn't. It's it's you know to borrow a term from from some other uh, realms in society. It's it's a it's a, a gateway to literacy. Right. But the interesting part is that it, 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 while it is a gateway. It also keeps coming back around uh, for people to to re-examine the texts and its applications uh, as an educator uh, and as someone who who runs the Comic Book Project Canada is beginning to see that it's got got major implications for students who are autistic, for students who have learning disabilities, for ELL students. Because it has a lot to do with memory and imaging and framing the view for interpretation and reasoning. Uh, and these are some deeper aspects that I, I, I'm always, I was always sure that were there. But now you, you genuinely see it uh, when, when you deal with the, those specific groups. And the last thing I, I think I want to leave you with is that it is a means. It's not the only means, but it is, it is certainly a means by which to rekindle the spirit of students who have resigned themselves to being, in their own words, I'm not good at reading, I'm not good at writing. And, 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 and we can really know that. And, and that's, that's the, the powerful medium uh, that's certainly there. And I always say this, uh, you know, to, to everyone, especially parents who think because I'm a parent myself, comic books are a little bit like Halloween candy. You do have to sort through them before you give it to your kids because some of them do contain mature themes, but I'm pleased to say there are many, many titles, even put out by the uh, major comic book uh, print publishers, that are uh, especially suited for children of different ages, and, and that's important. Thanks to Manfred for the chat. You can discover more on Twitter at Comic Canada and at Comic Book Project Canada, and also online at comicbookprojectcanada.com. And you can discover more about Whitcalf 2020 at whitbylibrary.ca slash Whitcalf. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube, so please like and subscribe to that video channel. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics Podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2020.